is also underway in parts of Nairobi, including Kibla and Madhari. In Kisumu, people are being pulled out of their houses and shot or crowbarred to death by police officers. In Migori and parts of Homabi, police are going into villages away from towns and shooting or crowbarring people to death. All the elements of the making of a genocide are present in the developments in Lourad. Victims are being dehumanized. The, there is organization. The attacks taking place are clearly planned. The people undertaking the destruction of the rules are clearly trained, whether they are police officers or goons. They are under a command structure and they are well resourced with arms they need. There is stigmatization and polarization accompanied by propaganda that the community is behind the nationwide protests. There is preparation with, perpetra with perpetrators knowing when to attack, which area, and they are using what appears to be the adopted slogan of dealing with Luo once and for all. Very similar to Hitler's so-called final solution. The attackers are working hard to create fear in the community by parading armies, equipment, and weapons. Victims are identified because of their ethnicity. They are segregated into ghettos. They are being starved and their property destroyed or scattered away. Murders are taking place in ways that are deliberate and systematic campaign of violence. This crackdown has been concentrated in slums and other low-income areas of the county where the so-called Hasras, in whose name the interests the Kenya Kwanza regime claims to govern. We condemn the unacceptable and illegal massacre of the rural community, whose only crime is to participate alongside other Kenyans in protests against Kenya Kwanza policies. We condemn and demand an immediate aid to the traumatization and providing of the Luo community, particularly the children who are being made to pay a price they do not understand. The genocide underway in Luolad is not accidental. It is coordinated and premeditated. It is being coordinated by political and government leaders, both from the community and outside. But it is not just in Nyanza. In Madare and Kibla in Nairobi, citizens were traumatized and tear gas canisters locked in their houses. A father who confronted police for hurrying tear gas into his house, causing his child to faint, was manhandled and battled into the police lorry like a criminal. His whereabouts remain unknown. Several people were shot dead at Cruz Ridge by non-uniformed and uniformed police in Nairobi, Nakuru, Mololongo, and Makweni by police mainly in plain clothes, shot and skewed citizens, shot and killed citizens, a majority of whom were going about their daily business, and others light at their places of work. Similar executions have occurred in Kisi, Busia, and Kericho, and elsewhere in Kenya, or in the name of stopping citizens' exercise to exercise their constitutional right to hold peaceful demonstrations. Much as Ruto tries to depict Azimio demonstrators as violent, it is evidently clear that our demonstrations are peaceful. And it is the police who import violence and use of excessive force into them. We remind all that whenever Azimio hold larries, and or demonstrations without police interference, they aid peacefully without violence or destructions. 
the decision by police command to force without to add peace free without violence or destructions no sorry the decision by police command to force access to homes is sharply and unnecessarily escalating tensions and costing lives inspector general of police mr jafet kome and cs interior professor kithure kidiki must immediately withdraw police officers from people's homes and residential areas especially now that there are no demonstrations the developments in nyansa take place against other equally worrying actions by the state both police and hard goons are trailing arresting and shooting people from vehicles with foreign number plates in the three-day demonstrations that ended last friday that was yesterday south sudan and tanzania number plates were feasibly deployed this creates unnecessary tension and conflict between our country and these federal countries and our people against the people of tanzania and southern sudan as police battle our people on the streets they have also taken over the corridors of justice in our courts we saw police attacking families of people seeking justice in court we saw honorable babu owino being abducted and ferried away from court corridors after being released on bail we saw the media being attacked and chased from court corridors as they did their job of informing the world of developments in the country as mere readers are being put at the house arrest constant surveillance and persistent threat of being arrested we demand the unconditional release of all the Azmir readers and supporters who are still being held in communicado. These developments also happen against the backdrop of constant verbal and unwarranted that their tribe against Uhuru Kenyatta, the fourth president of Kenya, and Luto's boast for 10 years from 2013 to 2022 August. The withdrawal of security of his mother, Mamangena Kenyatta. The attack on his son, Jomo, by uniformed police, claiming to be police, and the attack and vandalization of the Kenyatta family, Northrad's farm. These are all acts of grave provocation, not only to Huru Kenyatta and his family, but also to all right thinking Kenyans. Clearly, Ruto has for all intent and purposes suspended the constitution of kenya and is following his whims we shall not watch helplessly as luto and his cronies completely dismantle the republic of kenya as set up by our constitution we shall not surrender our rights including the right to life dignity and the right to peaceful protest we shall not surrender our voices or agency we shall fight for our rights as we have fought for them before and our fathers and as our fathers for fought for them, fought for them before last we call on all right thinking members of society to rise up and be heard let us all say enough is enough William Ruto and his illegitimate regime must listen to Kenyans. All these actions by police undermine the rule of law and the constitution. These actions point to the emergencies of a police state in Kenya. However, these actions that have left scores of Kenyans dead have earned police praise from William Ruto. We wish to make it clear that our people will not surrender or be cowed. We further make it clear that we will pursue no engagements with Kenya Kwanza whatsoever until these hostilities and their perpetrators are apprehended. We remain determined 
to right the wrongs being inflicted on our people, including state-induced high cost of living. Our peaceful countrywide demonstrations will continue next Wednesday. We are serving notice to all the OCSs across the country for the Wednesday peaceful demonstrations. In the meantime, the signature collection, which now starts at 8 million, continues. Thank you very much. Well, uh, attacks on our websites, yes, we reported, but we are ahead of them. Yes. We are well mitigated because we are the legitimate government, so to speak. So we can't feel how to deal with them. So, yes, they keep attacking, but they cannot penetrate us. Yes. The demonstrations will be on Wednesday. We have said it will be one day on Wednesday. From 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Sorry? Steve can do that. Well, well, thank you, uh, Steve Leto. Um, it was reported that um, a, ambassadors, actually four of them, the American ambassador, Meg Whitman, the British Chaje, and the Danish ambassador, as well as the representative of the United Nations community in Nairobi, and in fact at UN offices, the very high ranking, um, came over to my residence and uh, we agreed we will not at this stage address the media. Of course they are all very concerned, not just them as ambassadors, but the international community. The story of peaceful demonstrations turned violent by the police um, have received international visibility. On CNN, I personally watched some of these presentations on BBC, on Al Jazeera. We hope, by the way, to be able to meet with the international, some of these international correspondents in the next few days. And so everybody is concerned. And so, Steve, I hope I've answered your question, but we are saying, what sense does it make uh, to meet with people who are already committing acts of genocide? I was foreign minister in 1994 when genocide happened in our neighboring, in our sisterly state of Rwanda. We pray to God that this does not happen to our country. So it behoves all of us to take note of what is going on here. We also thank the African Union, uh, the AU Commission on Human and People's Rights for their statement. How do you tear gas 53 children and make them develop highly cases of asthma and other complications? These are basic rights and you cannot negotiate on people's basic rights. Basic rights are basic human rights. And so that is where we are. I don't know whether there's another question. Thank you. You had, you had uh, last week said that you were taking three days of protest because the 
people want, uh, had asked for it because of the high cost of living. So what now has changed to go back to one day? No, you must always take into consideration um, the reality of the situation on the ground. We realize that um, after day one on Wednesday, a lot of people were arrested, others were injured, and people had to run all of our hospitals and, and places to check on their loved ones. So we therefore have reached a con conclusion, peaceful, and we stress, by the way, peaceful and armed demonstrations. We call on our people to remain vigilant on that core. However much you feel provoked, don't harm any policeman. Leave it to them to harm you. The world is watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs>